is Dan with Dan and Sarah Makers, and today we have got a fun video. Can anyone guess what we're going to talk about today? Anyone in the back there? No? Okay. We're going to talk about nail guns. As you can see, I've got a whole pile of nail guns on this table. I've got some normal looking ones and I've got some funky looking ones. But we're going to talk about them. We're going to show you kind of their features, talk about what they're used for. And as you can see, some of these guns look pretty beat up. So um, yeah, I, I put a lot of nails through these things. So we're going to talk about the ones that I've got. And then I'm also going to talk briefly about some of the guns that are out there that I don't have. So I'm going to go through and describe the different types of nail guns I have sequentially in how they're used when we build a structure. So the first types of guns that you're going to use on a building would be your framing type guns. So I have a couple different types of regular framing nail guns here. One is the NR83, the other is the NR90 series of guns from Hitachi. And if you'll probably get the feeling that I really like Hitachi guns, which I do. Um, there's a bit of regional preference throughout the United States from my experience. So some parts of the country are real Hitachi lovers, other parts are real Senko, other parts are Stanley Bostitch, and other parts are Passload. Those are about the four main types of guns that you're going to see out there. There are many other brands. There's Max and Duo Fast and different brands like that. But I probably, except for I think four of my guns, all of them are Hitachi. So it just what I like in my experience. So we've got our two framing guns. This one's a little bit smaller, a little bit lighter weight, has a little less power, but it'll do pretty much everything I need it to do. Um, these two guns are basically for framing, attaching two by material together and putting on sheeting like uh, deck sheeting or exterior wall sheeting or roof sheeting, something like that. This particular gun here is what's called a Tico gun. And this has the capacity to shoot inch and a half and two and a half inch nails only. And those nails are specifically for connecting metal straps or hurricane ties or seismic ties, whatever you want to call them. Um, again, that's kind of a regional thing. Some parts of the country, we don't worry about earthquakes. Other parts of the country, we don't worry about hurricanes. But this is what that's specifically used for. It has the nail actually stick out of the nose of the gun so you can put the point of the nail in the hole in the strap connector and fire one nail. So it's a specialty gun, but it saves a lot of time. The next would be the palm nailer. And this is for getting into really tight, confined spaces. And basically it's just like, it does the same thing as if you had a hammer and just tapped on a nail really fast, but you didn't have much ability to swing the hammer. So this gets in there really tight. You just put the nail in the end and you just push it against the wood where you want to drive that nail and it'll actually hammer it in. It sounds like a machine gun going off pretty loud. You want earplugs if you're working inside with pretty much any of these. So um, these two guns here, they load slightly differently. This one has the strips of nails go in the top of the magazine. This one, they go in the back of the magazine. This one also goes in the back of the magazine. And all of these guns all have some sort of spring loaded follower that is pulled back and then it follows the nails and pushes them forward. Moving on, we are now looking at the exterior finish of a building. So we've got the structure framed up with all our framing nailers. Now we're looking at putting the roof on and siding and trim. So these three guns here are all coil nailers, which is where you see these round drums on them. They are two different styles. I've got a siding nailer here, and then I've got two roofing nailers. So the features of these guns are that they can hold a lot of nails in the magazine, which is where they're stored. The nails come collated with metal wire, and these nails will actually break off that wire as you drive the nails in or fire them. So you can do a lot of work. You don't have to reload constantly, and it's, it's just a convenient way of doing things. This nailer here is a siding nailer and it shoots a smaller diameter nail with a smaller diameter head. So it's really good for putting siding on. You don't have a big nail like a framing gun does. And it's a little bit more precise. It's got a depth of drive adjustment. It's got a orange bumper on the front here that keeps you from marring up siding. Um, things like hardy board siding are actually now being pre-painted and pre-finished. So the less you mar up the wood, the better. So this is a really good gun. It's 
I've also used it quite a bit for building fences. So all around a good gun here. These two guns here, one's a Senko, one's a Hitachi. They're almost identical. Their features are very, very, very similar. There's not much difference other than just a little of the exterior geometry, but the features are all the same. They both have magazines. They both are adjustable for multiple lengths of nails, and they have gauges where you can actually size the overlap of your shingles off the nose to this gauge here or the nose to this gauge. So that, that'll give you the amount of overlap you need. They both have carbide um, wear points in the nose here because working with shingles are really abrasive. Um, you'll wear through pants quite quickly working on a roof if you don't wear knee pads. But those carbide points will actually keep this nose piece from wearing out too quickly. So if you ever hear somebody working on a job site and you hear nails being fired where it's just bap, 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 chances are you're hearing a roofer because they're going to be putting down four to five nails pretty fast for each shingle. So that's what these guns are. All right, moving on. So we've got our building built with our framing nailers. We've got our roof and our siding on with our coil nailers. And now we are into the finish nailers. So these are the guns that we're going to use to install window trim, window casing, door jams, door casing, baseboard, wainscot, wood paneling, cabinetry, crown molding, all that kind of stuff, including some flooring. So we're going to start out with this one here because this one is probably the gun that you're going to use first. This is the gun. It's a finish nailer. It's an angled finish nailer. It fires the largest nails that will be fired out of these guns. And this is typically used for hanging doors. So it's got the biggest nail. Doors take a lot of abuse being swung back and forth, but we install it with finish nails. So this one here is, again, Hitachi. These two guns and this gun are Hitachis, and obviously these two are Stanley Boss Stitch. Just because of the color, you can tell pretty easily. This gun has some nice features. It's got a rubberized nose guard here on the nose safety. It's got a way to clear jams out of the nose like that. All these, I think pretty much all these Hitachis have that feature. It's got a depth of drive adjustment, which is a wheel here that we can screw in and out to adjust how deep the nail is driven. It's got a magazine with a spring-loaded follower. It's got sequential and single fire features or capability with a little lever that goes back and forth between those two features. All the Hitachis again have that. They have a um, exhaust port cover here that's adjustable. Sometimes you'll be in a corner or doing baseboard or something on the floor and that blast air comes out after you pull the trigger and it blows dust all in your face and not very fun. So you can actually adjust which direction this goes, which is a nice feature. And then this one here is kind of fun because it's got this little orange button here. And that button is actually a blow gun. So there's a little tiny hole in the front of the gun. It's kind of hard to see up here. But again, when you're working around the floor and you've got drywall dust and little particles and things like that that didn't get cleaned up really well, that little blow gun is nice. You get down in the corner, you just hit it and blow that dust out of the way. So that's a nice feature. The next guns that we would use would be these brad nailers. And these brad nailers, these two here, are identical except for the magazine and the uh, nose that allows that magazine to be attached and fire that length nails. They're both the same brand, Hitachis. This one shoots up to an inch and a quarter long brad. This one shoots up to a two inch long brad. They have the same features. They have the uh, little rubberized nose guard here. They have a trap door to get jams out. They've got sequential and single fire actuation selectors here. They have depth of drive, and then they have an adjustable um, exhaust cap up at top. The one thing they don't have, and this is the only gun that actually does have it, is a built-in blow gun. So this one here, I would use this longer gun to install door and window trim. So when the trim goes over the door jam or the window casing to the drywall, I would use this on the drywall side because I need a longer nail to go through the thick part of a casing, through the drywall, and into the framing behind it. So I get maybe an inch to an inch and a quarter of nail into the framing by using this longer gun. The shorter 
gun I would use on the door jam side. So the door uh, casing itself would be installed with this gun. I don't like using the longer ones, especially when you're doing wood finish, like stain grade work. So by having the shorter gun and the longer gun, I would actually have these both with me at the same time and I would need to trade out nails. So that's why I have two basically identical guns. The next type here is a gun that's gaining, or a type of gun that's gaining a lot of popularity, which is known as a micro nailer. And these things fire itty bitty teeny weeny little nails. They're almost small enough that you don't have to patch the nail holes in the woodwork when you're done using it. Um, if you paint your trim after it's been installed with this type of gun, the paint usually is thick enough that it'll actually bridge over the top of the nail head. Um, and then with finished woodworking where you're doing stain grade work, again, the holes are so tiny that it's not really a big deal. This gun here is unique compared to all the other guns in that it does not have a depressible safety on the nose that has to be depressed before you can pull the trigger. This one here, well, part of the reason for that is it's designed to get in such tight little areas that that nose safety would probably either dent the wood or it would not be able to um, allow you to get close enough to the wood to drive the nail all the way. So what they've done here is they have a two-stage trigger system where you have to pull the first trigger and then you can pull the second trigger. So, and if you don't do it in the right sequence, they don't operate. So it's a little bit of a safety thing. They basically say, what's, what's the best we can do with the features that the gun has to have? So this will fire nails from, well, actually micro nails from 3 eighths of an inch up to uh, 1 and 3 sixteenths of an inch. And I know they make longer ones. I think they go up to 2 inches possibly. But this is a real nice gun for really fine stuff. The last two here are actually staplers. This is a called a quarter inch crown stapler. And it'll fire staples that are a quarter inch wide. Or the crown is one quarter inch wide. Again, this one's a Hitachi. Basically the exact same features of this gun. It's, well, it's a, it's basically an identical gun, more or less. And it's got a magazine that will accept the staples and then a drive pin that will shoot staples. So all the same features. And I use this a lot when I'm putting down underlayment below floors, whether it's linoleum or wood flooring or something like that. You'll just put down tons and tons and tons of staples to make sure that that um, underlayment is really well secured to the subfloor. The final one here is the big monstrosity that looks kind of goofy. And this is actually a stapler that's designed specifically for tongue and groove wood flooring. So whether it's oak or cherry or maple or bamboo or whatever, this will install that. So it's got a foot plate here with a plastic non-mar piece that goes over the finished floor pieces that you're installing. It's got this edge here that engages the tongue on the tongue and groove side. And basically what you do is you stand up, you hold on to this handle, you place the stapler on that tongue and you pull it tight to the other flooring and you have a special mallet rubber mallet that you hit that knob with and that will drive the flooring tight and it will also fire a staple. So this is pneumatic. They have some just um, brute force ones where driving a plunger on this side actually drives a staple or a nail, but this one's a pneumatic one. It's got some staples in here. Don't know if they'll come out. Oh, there they go. So these are much larger than the quarter inch crown stapler so um they're a nightmare if you ever have to get the flooring out i would i would never probably attempt to save any flooring that's been installed with one of these it's just it's a mess just break the stuff out and get rid of it don't don't attempt to save it it's not worth it so this is a good gun to have um a very unique gun a lot of people will rent one of these just because it's a unique enough situation that you don't typically put down much hardwood flooring and if you do you do it in one room or one time and that's it so these are rented most likely instead of purchased the couple types of guns that i didn't 
talk about yet because I don't have any are uh, high pressure guns, which are becoming more and more common. Um, Max makes them and Makita is making them as far as I know. I don't know if anybody else is making them yet. They're nice because you can get a powerful nail gun in a very small and lightweight size, easy to maneuver. A gun this size, except for the magazine being bigger, would be adequate for framing. And they typically have a lot of power, so if you're working with engineered lumber like glue lambs or LVLs or something like that, they have enough power to drive nails into that and seat them fully. The only drawback of the high pressure systems is that you need a compressor, an air hose, and a gun that are all designed for that type of pressure. And when I'm talking about high pressure, all these guns here that I have operate from about 90 PSI to about 120 PSI right in that range. High pressure systems run at 400 PSI or more. So you need a lot of special equipment. The, you can't use the same air hoses. You can't use the same fittings. They are not interchangeable. And obviously the compressors have to be different also. So just to get the initial investment into being able to use a high pressure system, you're looking at probably a couple thousand dollars easily. So they look really cool. I've never used them personally. I'd love to give it a try, but we'll see. Maybe someday I'll get one. Um, and then the other type of nail gun that I haven't talked about is a concrete fastening nail gun. These nail guns are guns that have enough power to drive nails into concrete. So whether you're installing um, metal drywall track down to concrete or sill plates onto a slab, you can actually get a pneumatic nail gun that's powerful enough to do that. One of the great features of that is that you don't need to be licensed to use a pneumatic nail gun that will shoot into concrete. If you saw my previous video about carpenter tools, the uh, thumbnail for that video is actually a powder actuated nailer, which is how they installed nails into concrete and steel up until they had the uh, higher power pneumatic ones. Those you actually have to be licensed to use, and if you aren't, you and your company can get a pretty good fine for doing that kind of stuff. So the pneumatic ones, they have a lot of power. They're fairly expensive. You're looking at seven, eight hundred dollars for a pneumatic concrete nailer. But again, you're looking at seven, eight hundred dollars for a powder actuated one, which has a lot of storage regulations, um, licensing regulations. I've worked at an airport where they would allow us to use those if we jump through enough hoops uh, there are limitations on when you can use them during the day. There are limitations on what you have to do to store the shot, uh, the powder actuated shot strips. You have to leave them locked up or take them off, you know, it, a lot of stuff like that. So the pneumatic ones are kind of a benefit in that there's way less regulation. So those are pretty much what we're looking at for nail guns out there. So I hope you enjoyed the overview. Um, if you did, Hey, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment. If there's something that I didn't answer, uh, go ahead and leave a comment and ask. I'd be more than happy to do a follow-up on this. So like, subscribe, share, and then tell us what you think. So until next time, this is Dan with Dan and Sarah Makers. Have a good one.